Yo, Senior Ronnie. Hey, hey. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Hey, you know, um, there are a lot of people who are looking for a big payday. Yeah. And they don't really want to work for it, per se. They just want to find a big payday. That's why there's more lawyers in the United States <laughs> than I, football players. I think or, you got a point. <laughs> well, on today's show, in addition to the Fen treasure, we have found 12 additional treasures rumored to be hidden somewhere in the United States, and you and I are going to shed some light on them on this episode of Men Are So Smart. I can't wait. Well, hi there. Hello. Welcome to Men Are So Smart. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And many of you watch our show to get information on the Fen treasure, and we were not going to let you down today. We do have some, a tidbit on the treasure, but we also have 12 additional treasures rumored to be hidden somewhere in the United States, and we'll bring those to you as well. Uh, just wanted to mention that if you'd like, you can follow us and our exploits on um, treasuretracer.com. That's right slash community. The folks there have been nice enough to give us our very own section on their forum page. And you can go there to see videos and you can comment there as well. And we'll put a link to that in our description below. It's under entertainment. Right. News which, and entertainment. Which might be a little bit, you know. What? Well, well yeah, I guess it is entertaining. Watch, well, I am. Watch two old farts. Grumpy. Two grumpy old farts. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> All right, about a decade a decade ago, 85-year-old Forrest Fenn allegedly, that's how they use the word in this particular story, allegedly hid what experts estimate a to be a $5 million gold jewelry and artifact treasure in a small bronze chest somewhere between four states in the Rocky Mountains. In a cryptic poem entitled The Thrill of the Chase, that's the book, Fenn dropped clues as to the whereabouts of this hidden treasure and inspired thousands of adventurers and treasure hunters to go searching. Sadly, some have even died trying. So far, the treasure has not yet been located and even inspired a great April Fool's joke this year, Ronnie. Remember I remember that. that. Uh, I kind of fell for it. Yeah. Well, you weren't the only one. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I got that and I thought, oh my gosh, Ronnie and I have got to get together and do this story immediately. Yeah. I even, honestly, I even thought about asking to leave work early to come over here and shoot an episode. Yeah, all for not. Yep. Yep. All right, this next one, we've actually done a brief story on this one also. Uh, wealthy casino heir, Ted Binion. Oh, yeah. He's been dead for over two decades, but his legacy lives on in the form of a silver collection said to be worth several million dollars yes. that's rumored to be buried somewhere of the, on the property of his Pahrump, Nevada ranch. Pahrump. Pahrump, Pahrump, Pahrump. Uh, Binion was allegedly murdered in 1998 at the age of 55 by his girlfriend and a collaborator, or a co-conspirator, if you will. Or were they? <laughs> uh, while the duo was acquitted of murder on appeal, they were convicted in ch on charges related to silver theft, the motive being his collection of silver items worth several million dollars at the time, now worth much more. Uh, some believe all the silver has been recovered. Still others think a buried fortune remains somewhere on or under the property. Dun, dun, dun. Crazy. Crazy. The old Ozark treasure cave. Have you heard of this one? No. In one of the Ozark's biggest mysteries, the old Spanish treasure cave in the northwest corner of Arkansas is believed to hold treasure buried by Spanish conquistadors fleeing the Native Americans over 350 years ago. Dang. The supposed treasure itself has not yet been found, but artifacts from the time period, helmets, weapons, even some armor, 
have. So there is still some hope yet. Wow, that's that would be. You should ask Jim Hall about that one. He probably was there that day. <laughs> he was there. Jim Hall, local radio <laughs> disc jockey. He's been around Friend forever. Friend of mine, and he's an old guy. <laughs> Uh, somewhere in Virginia lies Mosby's sack. I bet Mosby's not very happy about he that. He probably, uh, probably cried a little bit What's when he, he lost his sack. What's he doing without his sack? Yeah. I hate it when my, when my wife keeps my sack. Yeah. Uh, in 1863, Confederate Ranger John Singleton Mosby and his band of guerrilla raiders... Wow. I got their last album. It was great, Ronnie. <laughs> the Gorilla Raiders? It was really good, yeah. Uh, they were able to sneak 10 miles into Union territory and capture more than 40 Union troops at the Fairfax, Virginia courthouse, all without firing a single shot. I'd like to see that done again. Uh, Mosby reportedly left with a burlap sack stuffed with what was then valued of about three hundred thousand dollars worth in gold. In eighteen sixty three, it was worth that much money. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Holy cow! Imagine how much that's worth now. Probably at least four hundred thousand. At least worth four hundred and ten. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, it was gold, silver, jewelry, candlesticks, and other fairly heirlooms. All of them taken from the homes of local plantation owners. On the way back to the Confederate line, Mosby was warned that Union soldiers were nearby and opted to bury the sack between two trees, marking the spot with his knife. Oh, that's that's pretty permanent. Seems yeah, like. X marks the spot. Yeah. Later, he sent seven of his men back to the, retrieve it, but they were captured and executed. Or were they? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe. Uh, as far as we know, Mosby never went back, so the loot could still be out there. I love when people call treasure loot. Yeah. Let's start doing that more. Loot. The loot. Uh, next up on our list of treasures that are still out there, are blackbirds. Blackbird. Blackbird. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. <laughs> Blackbeards. Atlantic Coast treasure trove. I'm sorry. Let me compose myself. <clears throat> From 1716 to 1718, you were there, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the pirate Blackbeard steered his ship around the West Indies and Atlantic coast of North America, attacking ships laden with gold, silver, and other treasures from Mexico and South America on their way back to Spain. Arr, me mateys. Why didn't he just hack into their PayPal account? I, that would have been a lot easier. But I think it was because he just had that hook. And if I could, <laughs> type, I could just type. <laughs> Blackbeard is said to have boasted about his buried treasure, but never trusted anyone enough to divulge the secret location. Good thinking. Mm. He was finally defeated and executed, uh-oh, in 1718. Treasure hunters have been searching for it ever since, seeking clues everywhere from Virginia's Chesapeake Bay to the Caribbean and the Cayman Islands. You know what kind of socks Blackbeard wore? I don't think so, Ronnie. What kind? Argyle. Hey, you know what a pirate's favorite welding gas is? <laughs> no. Argon. <laughs> Argon. <laughs> uh, this next one is the East Idaho Stagecoach Robbery. Oh, I love these kind of things. Yep. Reminds me of, um, what was that movie with Robert Redford and Paul? Butch Cassidy. Cassidy. Butch Cassidy, yeah. yeah. Sunday, All right, kid. tell me more. Tell yes. me more. Somewhere in East Idaho is a bloody treasure worth millions of dollars. Sounds messy. In gold. Oh. At least that's the legend. Uh, this is from the East Idaho News. The Overland stage line in 1865 carrying gold in its cargo was held up by the Picket Coral Gang. Uh, pretty prolific. Joe Walsh was in that band. <laughs> <laughs> that was the James Gang. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the James I'm Gang. I'm sorry. I don't know. Very closely that. related to the Picket Coral Gang. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a prolific stagecoach robbery syndicate from back in the days. Hmm. Now, if the robbery took place, and it's not a foregone conclusion that it did, the gang probably hid it in Portnuff Canyon. Um, but you know. What you know, just like guys that drive armored trucks now, every once in a while one of them goes rogue, snaps, and sets up a fake robbery because they're smarter than the other thousand people who failed at it, right? Yeah, so you know, it's possible this could be the same thing. Hawaii's Palomano Point, 
Palomino Point, an exposed reef off Hawaii's Big Island, may contain over $5 million in buried pirate treasure in the form of silver and gold said to have belonged to Captain Thomas Cavendish, an English privateer who lived in the 16th century. That's according to Hawaii's Unsolved Mysteries. Modern-day explorers have tried and failed to locate the treasure and the ship itself, but who knows what tomorrow may bring. <laughs> and as if you need uh, any other reason to go to Hawaii. I don't. King Kamehameha's burial chamber is mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Uh, he died, the King Kamehameha died in 1819 and was supposedly buried with millions of dollars worth of gold and jewels. But Kamehameha's barrier chamber, barrier, <laughs> burial chamber has never been located, at least not yet. Some believe it's on the Napali coast. I, you know what? Uh, that's Kauai. Yeah, uh, I spent some time in Kauai, and uh, I think I know where that is. It's like on the northeast side of the island, and um, it is it is still the talk of tourists and tourist huts, if you will, uh, still there in Hawaii. Oregon Spanish shipwreck. And yet another tale of lost Spanish loot. When a Spanish ship sunk off the Oregon coast in 1705, it supposedly left behind gold and other treasures. The mere fact that it might exist is enough to drive real estate in the area. If you thought you could buy a second home on the coast, but knew it would stretch your budget, the tipping point might just be, oh my God, there's 500 pounds of gold somewhere up there. <laughs> hmm, good reason to move. Yeah. Uh, now, this one is, well, this is recent, not, not super recent, but kind of recent history, and it's my favorite. I love Wild West stories. Me too. Uh, Oklahoma's secret space for Jesse James loot. Loot. This loot. There's that word again. Somewhere in Oklahoma, and most likely in the vicinity of Robber's Cave in the Wichita Mountains. Apropos. There is said to be over $1 million worth of hidden treasure left behind by Je Jesse James and his band of outlaws back in the 19th century. There are literally hundreds of tales, all ending essentially the same. He left the treasure behind in the Wichita's, and it's never been seen again. Hmm. Wow. I wonder if real-life treasure hunters like Jack yeah. are, are, sorry, Tar? are ever out there looking for that. I just wonder because because it's there. It, it just makes it seem like, man, there's development and everything else it had to have been stumbled across. You would think so by now, right? Yeah. Dutch, Dutch Schultz's treasure. One of the most perplexing hidden treasure mysteries is that of gangster Dutch Schultz, who may or may not have hidden a $7 million fortune somewhere in the Catskill Mountains of New York. As Schultz lay dying, shot by a rival gangster. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, it's messy. He muttered something about hidden treasure, but no one has ever found it, as far as we know. Mm. That could change next month when the Travel Channel show Code of the Wild... Uh, look for it on a television station near you, <laughs> airs the episode where there's a massive hunt for Schultz's stash. Try to say that. <laughs> Schultz's stash. <laughs> well, and I will tell you this, that in law enforcement work, if somebody gives you a dying, what we call a dying declaration, uh -huh. it's probably true. And more than one person has been shot and said, Jim shot me. And... That's good enough to stand up in court. Dying declarations are solid evidence. Because huh. nobody's, there's no motivation. If you if you know you're dying, somebody says, yeah, you've been shot in the heart, you have about 12 seconds to live. Uh, no one's going to, typically, no one. I'm, maybe this guy is a notorious liar, but uh, they give you a dying declaration, it's good as gold. Huh, didn't know that. Yep. Uh, next one, again with the pirates. Lost pirate treasure of uh, Mashiasport, Maine. 
the small eastern main town of Mashiasport may be secreting millions of dollars in valuable treasures that once belonged to the pirate Samuel Bellamy, who some say was the model for Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, cool. Oh, I love me some Captain Jack. Uh, back in 1716, Bellamy stumbled across the area and built a house to hold his treasures. But Bellamy and his pirate prince princes didn't stay long. They were soon back out scoring more booty. Uh, Wait a minute. Would you call that a booty call? <laughs> it's or, pirate booty. I, I know booty is something else. <laughs> was, well, this was slightly different. Oh. Uh, and worth much more. Oh, oh, okay. So not that kind of booty. No, oh. no. This is super valuable. Sorry, I booty. didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, that's a, that's a different show. Okay, gotcha. Uh, ultimately, Bellamy was captured and hanged in Massachusetts. His treasures have never been located. Hmm. As far as we know. Allegedly. Allegedly. All right. Well, there you have today's episode of Men Are So Smart. The treasure's out there, my friends. Yeah. Many of them. And uh, whether you know it or not, and you may be a Fen treasure searcher, whether you know it or not, there are professional treasure hunters who are out trying to secure these treasures themselves. Right. You may not hear about them all the time, and you may not even hear about them going and exploring, but it's being done behind the scenes. Trust me. Well, Force Fen's treasure is much more contemporary than anything we've just oh, read. Oh, to be sure, yeah, Ronnie. But still, people, you know, if they get the, they get the scent of it a little bit, they read a story, they want to go out and look for it. Well, I'm fascinated by hidden treasure. I kind of am, too. Um, the one thing about treasure, and it's not just folklore, but people have died over it. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not specifically referring to the Fen treasure. Any treasure. And, and, you know, if I might say about, and I haven't said this in a while, if I might say this about the Fen treasure. If you are putting your life in jeopardy at any point climbing a mountain, or crossing an extremely dangerous and treacherous river, uh, the chances are you're not in the right area. No. And I don't mean to oversimplify, but in the Fen Treasure, the case of the Fen Treasure, Forrest Fen was able to make two trips to this location from his car. Right. And um, he was 80 years old. Yeah. Seriously, if you think he's climbing rocks and banging spikes in and using rope and stuff, you're you're putting your own life in danger, yep. my friends. It has nothing to do with the Fen treasure because that just could not be further from the truth. Yep. It's not going to be some mountain you're going to have to climb. And so anyway, uh, okay. So there you have it. Be sure and check out some of our other Fen issues episodes, if you will. Uh, we have many of them in our library. We also have a grand total of somewhere there like four fifty or four hundred and sixty episodes of our show. That's that's too many. And we don't just do just treasure stories, Ronnie. We no. do so many other things on a variety of topics. Most of them are amusing. We, don't, show, we um, don't do too many serious. No, nah, it's just not the kind of guys that we are. Yeah. We like to fool around. and Serious isn't fun. No, nah, not at all. We're serious every seven, six days a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, our shows come out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then we do a little something special on Sundays which we call Sunday Morning Mass, and we hope that you'll join us for that as well. Our website, got some fun stuff for you, some surveys to take, videos, photos of us. Uh, that's menaresosmart.com. If you'd like to communicate with us, you can comment below on our video, or if you choose to be a little more private about it, you can email us. My email is lou at menaresosmart.com. So is mine. Oh, no, 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 no. I've been getting a lot of your email. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is Ronnie uh, at menaresosmart.com. All right, so that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Yep. And we'll see you if we don't stumble onto some buried treasure before. Yeah, other than that, I'm out of here. <laughs> Yo, you were gone. Don't. <laughs> but the chances of that happening... Pretty slim. Very slim. Yep. Uh, I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. Next time, Men Are So Smart.